Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden, and welcome to Constellation Tour number 39. Tonight we're going to talk about Ophiuchus, the serpent holder, sometimes called the serpent bearer. I have Stellarium set up here for August the 4th, 2020, at about 9.30 p.m. The constellation Ophiuchus is best viewed between June and August, so it is certainly a summertime constellation. So I also have Stellarium set up for a 60 degree apparent field of view. Oh, actually an actual field of view that simulates the view of the sky you get with the unaided eye. And I have it set up for moderate light pollution, um, like you would get from the suburbs. So how do we go about finding Ophiuchus? Well, on a clear summer night, just go outside and look south and look for the constellation Scorpius. Scorpius is very easy to see. Look for these three stars in a row here that sort of look like Orion's belt. And that is the claw of scorpion, of the scorpion. And here, here's the body of the scorpion here. Here's the stinger down here. Here's the body. Here's Antares, or the heart of the scorpion. It's kind of a reddish star. And here are the claws. So this is, this is Scorpius here. So what you want to do is follow these three stars of the scorpion's claw upward and it's going to point right to this star here. And if you notice, this star is one of three that are in a widely spaced line here. And that is the bottom part of Ophiuchus. Now, Ophiuchus, sometimes the asterism is called the coffee pot because you'll notice this shape here. I'm going to draw an arrows to it. This is sort of shaped like a tall coffee pot. So let me show you the constellation lines. And you'll see this shape here of Ophiuchus is the coffee pot. And below it you have Scorpius here, the stinger, the body, and, and the claws here. So that's the way that I find Ophiuchus. There is another way to find it. If you know where to find Hercules, the keystone of Hercules in the summer months is really high up. It's these four stars right here. You'll notice that you have two stars that come off the keystone here and they will take you down to this star here and that's I think that's Razel Gethy, and then this star right next to it is Razel Hague, and that is the top of the coffee pot asterism of Ophiuchus. So there's two ways there you can go about finding it. Myself, I prefer to find Scorpius. I think it's a it's a brighter constellation, and these three stars here point right to it. So I think that's the easier way. So I'm going to go ahead and put the constellation boundaries up as well as the line of the ecliptic. Um, Ophiuchus is along the ecliptic which means that the sun passes through Ophiuchus um, as well as the moon and planets. The sun leaves Scorpius and enters Ophiuchus each year on November the 29th. And it crosses Ophiuchus here and then enters Sagittarius on December the 18th each year. So that makes Ophiuchus uh, one of the constellations along the ecliptic. Although, interestingly, it is not a member of the zodiac. And there are many, many theories as to why. Um, I think it's easiest to just 
say that they didn't want 13 of them. They're only 12 months in the year, and by limiting the number of zodiac constel uh, constel constellations to 12, um, it's very simple to allocate one zodiac constellation or one astrological sign, if you will, to um, to a month, to a month, uh, to one twelfth of the year. But you can see the sun actually spends more time in Ophiuchus than it does in in Scorpius. So I'm surprised. Sometimes I'm surprised that those weren't flip flop that. Scorpius wasn't dropped and Ophiuchus included, so I'm sure there are historical reasons for that. Okay, we return to a naked eye view. Uh, let's look for let's look for some bright stars in Ophiuchus, and let's start with Razel Haig. So if you look if you look for these three stars here in the Scorpion. And they will point you to this middle star of these three that represent the bottom part of the coffee pot asterism. The topmost star of the coffee pot lid is Razel Haig. And that is a second magnitude star. It's, it's uh, let's see, it's 48 light years from Earth. And it's not a double star. Let's go ahead and look at Razel Haig through the finder. And what I usually use Razel Haig for is a pointer to find Razel Gethy. Because Razel Gethy is a double star. And Razel Gethy is actually across the border in Hercules. It's not actually in Ophiuchus. Razel Gethy is one of the night sky's nicest double stars. You'll see that it splits off pretty easily into a bright gold and a and a bluish white uh, fainter star. Razel Gethy is magnitude three. So that's basically what I use Razel Hague for is a, is a jumping point off to find Razel Razel Gethy. Now, Razel Haig itself is also known as Alpha Ophiuchi. It's the alpha star in the constellation Ophiuchus. And, and you'll see through a, a eyepiece here that it is just a single star. It's not a double. But it still does make a nice target for small telescopes. Okay, we return to naked eye view here. And you can see the three stars of Scorpius here pointing to the bottom part of the coffee pot. So I have a, a multiple star here to search for, and that's Rho Ophiuchi. And Rho is really close to the border of Scorpius. You can see it's just outside the border here, and it's very close to Antares. So that's one way you can find Rho Ophiuchi. And Rho is listed as a multiple star. So through the finder scope, you can see two fainter companions. And through a 19 millimeter eyepiece, this is actually a stunning, a stunning multiple star. You can see there's four components. Rho is 394 light years from Earth. And you can see some Milky Way um, stars in the background because of its location in the sky. It's in the, the haze of the Milky Way. Very nice target. Okay, I have another double star here we can look for, and that's 36 Ophiuchi. Oh, 
let's see where that is within the boundaries of Ophidicus. Okay. Uh, 36 is the fifth magnitude double star located 19 light years from Earth, so it's actually pretty close to us. And there it is through the finder. It looks like it has a, a faint companion. Let's take a look at it through the eyepiece. And there's the companion there, and it looks like it has another companion here. I'm not sure it splits any further. We can certainly find out. Yes, it does. It splits again. So 36 Ophiuchi would be a really, really nice target for a backyard telescope. That was pretty impressive. Okay, I have another double star, and that's 70 Ophiuchi. see where that is in the constellation. Okay, it's up in the upper regions of it. And let's have a look at the mythical figures. Let's see. And you can see Ophiuchus is shown as a person holding a snake. And as I said, he's known as the serpent holder or the serpent bearer. And here's here's Razel Haig, looks like his ear. And then here's the coffee pot asterism. And these three stars that make up the bottom of it look like they're part of the snake's body. Very cool. So let's have a look at 70 Ophiuchi through the finder. And you can see through the finder it doesn't appear to split. And through a 19 millimeter eyepiece, it's not splitting. And through a 9 millimeter, it looks like it's just starting to split. So let's have a closer look here. Let's zoom in on it manually. There we go. That splits nicely. That looks sort of like Alberio. It's a bright gold and a uh, fainter bluish member. Located just 16 light years from Earth. So these are some some nearby neighbors. Very nice. So Ophiuchus is also chock full of Messier objects. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven Messier objects, and there's an NGC and an IC that are interesting. So let's let's start by looking for the Messier objects. And to do that, let's let's navigate out to a dark site. Let's make it dark. And now you can see. Let's see if you can find Ophiuchus from a dark site. Here are the three stars of Scorpius, and they point up to this middle star here of the bottom of the coffee pot asterism here. So you've got these three stars, and you come up here. Here's Razel Haig. Here's the top of the coffee pot. And you can see here, here's the, the Milky Way background here right next to it. So let's look for M9 first. I believe M9 is a globular cluster, and there are a lot of globular clusters in Ophiuchus. We'll start with M9. Yeah, that's going to be nice. That's right in the haze of the Milky Way here. And you can see through the finder, you're just beginning to see a smudge. Um, M9 is magnitude 8.4, and it's located 25,000 light years from Earth. So let's have a look at M9 through an eyepiece. And this is through a 9 millimeter eyepiece, 
Let's back that off to a 19 millimeter. And you can see these other two background stars kind of guide you to it. Okay, let's look for M10. And it looks like this middle star here um, in the bottom of the coffee pot, if you just go straight up from it toward Razel Haig, about a third of the distance, you should bump right into it. This is a sixth magnitude globular cluster. So this one's actually going to stand out even in your finder or with binoculars. And let's look through an eyepiece. That should be really really satisfying. This is through a 19 millimeter panoptic. M10 is located 14,000 light years from Earth, so it's closer to us than M9. Ophiuchus is amazing. It's really amazing it doesn't get more attention than it does. There is a lot to see in Ophiuchus. Next is M12. Now it looks like M12 is right next to M10. And you can actually see M10 right here. And here's M12 through the finder. And this one's also called the Gumball Globular Cluster. It's magnitude 7.6, located 15,000 light years from Earth. And M12 does have this interesting Y-shaped asterism uh, superimposed in front of it. So these stars here are actually cl much closer to us than the globular cluster. Okay, that was awesome. Let's find the next one. So, so far we have an M10 and M12 are right here, right in the middle of the coffee pot, right in this area right here. So let's look for M14. I think it's in the same area as well. Now it's over to the side a little bit. And M14 is magnitude 8.3. And it's located 30,300 light years from Earth. And here's a view of it through the 19 millimeter panoptic eyepiece. As nice as this is, the simulation, I'm still waiting for the improvement where they can somehow, somehow show this picture less obvious, you know, somehow just blend it into the background. I'm not sure how they would do that. Make it even more realistic, but this is pretty, pretty nice the way it is, so I shouldn't complain. Okay, next Messier object in Ophiuchus is M19. And M19 is real close to the again, uh, to the border of Scorpius. M19 is another globular cluster. This one is magnitude 7.4, located 28,700 light years from Earth. And you can see there is a ton of stuff to see in Ophiuchus. Okay, next on the list is M62, another globular cluster. This one's even closer to the border with Scorpius. I mean, it's right on the border, wow. I mean, that could, part of it's actually over the border into Scorpius, that's interesting. 
So let's have a look at that through the eyepiece. That's a nice one. This is magnitude 7.4, located 22,000 light years from Earth. Okay, we have one more globular cluster um, on the Messier list within Ophiuchus's boundaries, and that's M107. Now that one looks like when you when you find the top of Scorpius and you point your way to this middle star, M107 should be on the along the journey there. This is a ninth magnitude globular cluster located 20,800 light years from Earth. A little fainter than the others, but still looks like it would be a nice target. Okay, that's all the Messier objects within Ophiuchus. I've got an NGC open cluster and an IC open cluster. So let's start with the NGC. It's uh, 6633. That looks like it's in the upper, yeah, the upper regions of Ophiuchus, almost in the board, in the, across the border into Serpens. Oh yeah, that is really nice. What a nice, I love open clusters. This is magnitude 4.6. Um, let's see, does it have a distance listed? They don't have a distance listed for this one. Sometimes they don't. And let's go with a low power IP. So the 24 millimeter pan optic. Um, you can see the cluster, this open cluster is so big it doesn't all quite fit within a field of view. So you'll have to pan around a little bit. And then um, for a final deep sky object within Ophiuchus, I have IC4665. And this one is magnitude 4.2. So it's a, this is a little bit looser of an open cluster, which is probably why it's on the index catalog. It's also known as Colander 349. And through a low power eyepiece, it's actually actually looks pretty nice. Okay, well this concludes my tour of Ophiuchus, the Serpent Holder. Good night and good seeing.